Today's anniversary ceremony marks the 75th anniversary of recruit training here at Cape May. Presiding over today's ceremony is Deputy Secretary of Homeland Security, Mr. John Teen. He will be joined by Admiral Steve Pullen, the 33rd Vice Commandant of the U.S. Coast Guard, and Master Chief Petty Officer Heath Jones, the 14th Master Chief Petty Officer of the Coast Guard, and Captain Warren Judge, Commanding Officer Training Center, Cape May. We also have many distinguished visitors joining us today, including Deputy Mayor Lorraine Baldwin from the City of Cape May. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. Cape May County Commissioners Brigadier General Jeffrey Pearson, retired, and Mr. Will Morey. Mayor Frank Sippel, Mayor of Lower Township and a retired Sergeant Major of the U.S. Army. Mayor William Pekalski, Office of the Mayor, Borough of Woodbine. Mayor Patrick Anzanola, City of North Wildwood. Master Chief Petty Officer Sauls, Deputy Master Chief Petty Officer of the Coast Guard. Master Chief Petty Officer Tim Beard, Reserve Master Chief Petty Officer of the Coast Guard. Rear Admiral Jeffrey Randall, Prospective Commanding Officer, Force Readiness Command. Rear Admiral Tim Timothy Riker, retired. Captain Curtis Odom, retired. 26th Training Center Cape May Commanding Officer. Captain Kathy Felger, the 32nd Training Center Cape May Commanding Officer. Captain Jonathan Thiel, C Commanding Officer of Sector Delaware Bay. Mr. Christopher Chin, District Director of Representative Van Drew's Office. Ms. Wendy Taylor Emerson, Regional Director for Philanthropy for District 5 of the Coast Guard Foundation, Mr. Bob Montgomery, Coast Guard Foundation Trustee, Ms. Bar Marla Brown, Director of Cape May County Coast Guard Community Foundation, Mr. Mike Vall, City Manager of City of Cape May, Rebecca Parks, Regional President, USO Northeast Region, Joanne Schultze, Executive Director of USO Pennsylvania and New Jersey, Mr. Brian Laughlin, USO Philadelphia Airport C Center Manager, and Ms. Caroline Schultz, Training Center Cape May's own Ombudsman. We sincerely appreciate you all joining us here today. Already joining us on the stage is Command Chaplain, Lieutenant Commander Andrew Colvin, United States Navy, and Training Center Cape May's Command Master Chief, Master Chief Petty Officer Rad Hoffpower. The active duty reserve civilian and auxiliary men and women who make up the Coast Guard family at Training Center Cape May are represented today by the assembled audience and guests. In a short moment, on your on your left, the Recruit Training Regiment will be represented by the Recruit Company Uniform 203. They are in their seventh week of training and are the senior recruit company. Training Center Cape May historically graduates approximately 3,500 Coast Guard men and women annually who are prepared to carry out Coast Guard operations and missions. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the arrival of the official party, rendering of honors and playing of the national anthem. <laughs> Military personnel, attention. Now, Training Center Cape May arriving. Now, Master Chief Petty Officer of the Coast Guard, arriving. Now, Vice Commandant, U.S. Coast Guard, arriving.
Now, Deputy Secretary of Homeland Security arriving. Hand salute. Ready, two. Ladies and gentlemen, please remain standing for the national anthem and the invocation. Hand salute. Ready, two. Ladies and gentlemen, Chaplain Colvin will now deliver the invocation. Let us pray. Almighty God, divine commander of wind and sea, radiant source of virtue and our hope, thank you for this memorable occasion on which we honor the proud legacy of U.S. Coast Guard Training Center Cape May, birthplace of the Coast Guard Enlisted Corps. As we celebrate the 75th birthday of this remarkable training center, we trust in your divine providence to steer her course upon the waters of abundant grace and success, undetoured by the gloomy storms of darkness. May the fruits of this esteemed institution keep our nation safe and continue to give hope and deliverance to those in peril at sea. Since the establishment of the U.S. Coast Guard Training Center Cape May in 1948, its dedicated command and unwavering company commanders have generated the finest Coast Guardsmen in the world to thrive with the incomparable virtues of honor, respect, and devotion to duty. 
Bless our selfless young Americans who courageously give their lives to face and master the challenges of search and rescue, marine safety, maritime law enforcement, national defense, and marine resource protection. Bless all present and all our guardians of the sea, especially those who now stand the watch. Keep them safe, vigilant, and robust in all their duties. Forever bless our families and loved ones. May your divine light give radiance to our hearts and minds, O Lord, this day and always, as we look forward with a hopeful vision of our future. Amen. Thank you, Chaplain Colvin. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Training Center Cape May's Battalion Commander, Master Chief Petty Officer Michael Schneider, will now lead the battalion as they pass in review. The battalion is now preparing to pass in review. This is a military tradition that demonstrates honor for the official party at the reviewing stand. On command, each company will pass, perform an eyes right, and salute. Training Center Cape May's recruit battalion is led by Master Chief Petty Officer Michael Schneider from Brigantine, New Jersey. He is joined by Chief Curran of Broadview Heights, Ohio, and Chief Nobile of Smyrna, Tennessee. Whiskey Company is in their fifth week of training. Their lead company commander is Petty Officer DeMond from Preach Tree, Georgia. His assistant, Petty Officer Howell, and Petty Officer Lincoln Hawker. X-Ray Company is in their fourth week of training. Their lead company commander is Petty Officer Caballo from Waipahu, Hawaii. His assistant Petty, are Petty Officer Cologne and Petty Officer Prioli. Victor Company is in their sixth week of training. Victor Company is also our second 10-week beta company. Their lead company commander is Petty Officer Kappelman from San Pedro, California. Her assistants are Petty Officer Vasquez and Petty Officer Berg. Nestled between the Atlantic Ocean and Cape May Harbor, Training Center Cape May once belonged to the U.S. Marines and the U.S. Navy, and was an instrumental training area for troops during World War I and World War II. Training Center Cape May was originally named Coast Guard Receiving Center Cape May when it opened on May 31, 1948. In 1982, Training Center Cape May became the service's only recruit training center. In the late 1960s, three 500-person recruit barracks and housing facilities were constructed and named after Coast Guard heroes. Signalman First Class Douglas Monroe, the Coast Guard's only Medal of Honor recipient. Captain Joshua James of the U.S. Life Saving Service and one of the most celebrated lifesavers in the world. And Captain Michael Healy of the U.S. Revenue Cutter Service, a legend along Alaska's 20,000 miles coastline. In 1974, the first group of women enlisted and reported to Cape May and mixed gender recruit training began. In the 90s, the training center's recruit processing building was dedicated to Petty Officer First Class Charles W. Sexton, a shipmate who sacrificed his life while attempting to save the lives of four people aboard a sinking fishing vessel. Today, the training center graduates approximately 3,500 new Coast Guardsmen each year and is committed to developing America's newest enlisted men and women in a, man in a manner that secures the trust and confidence of our service and families who trust us with the care of their loved ones. Our women and men also provide the highest level of support to our 12 tenant commands that includes operational and support units. Training Center Cape May is the Coast Guard's sole enlisted so session source and the fifth largest base in the Coast Guard. 
Ladies and gentlemen, it is now my distinct honor to introduce Captain Warren Judge, Commanding Officer of Training Center Cape May, and the 33rd Commanding Officer of Training Center Cape May. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, honor, respect, devotion to duty. With protocol already being established, Deputy Secretary Tien, Vice Commandant Admiral Poulin, Master Chief Petty Officer of the Coast Guard, guess all. I'm Captain Warren Judge and humble and honored to be your 33rd Commanding Officer of Coast Guard Training Center, Cape May, New Jersey. I'm grateful of the trust with the Commandant, ForceCom, and the Coast Guard has put in my abilities to lead this prestigious command. This only happens with the outstanding team we have surrounding each other. With that being said, please join me in a round of applause for the entire staff here at Training Center Cape May. <laughs> From the beginning of the Cold War in 1948, through today, a large number of Training Center Cape May recruits have been present to help shape the big rock world with the U.S. events. Armed conflicts such as Vietnam and Gulf Wars, hurricanes such as Hurricane Katrina, major oil spills such as Exxon Valdez, humanitarian efforts such as the Mario boat lift and migrant rescues, as well as search and rescue and counter drug operations. For the past 75 years, just about every Tuesday evening, I know some of you in the audience are thinking about, hmm, what was my Tuesday? <laughs> a group of volunteers start their voyage to the land of being called a coastie. The potential recruits get off the bus filled with butterflies, anxiety, and nervousness. They immediately take on the task of not only knowing, but learning the values of the Coast Guard, the Coast Guard's core values of honor, respect, and devotion to duty. Eight weeks later, the recruits are crossing the stage filled with confidence, motivation, and dedication that the Training Center Cape May and the company commanders have taught them. I remember the day I graduated from boot camp in 1986. Damage Controlman Chief Evans gave me that look, saying, hey, recruit judge, now seaman judge or seaman apprentice, go out, have fun, and do what you have been taught. Going to my first cutter as a mess cook, understanding and learning and growing and maturing is all phenomenal, and this is what we are teaching the recruits of today, the value of the Coast Guard. While preparing for this anniversary event, I pondered the impact of Training Center Cape May through the past 75 years and came up with three key areas. The first impact is on our greatest resource, our people. Unfortunately, I'm unable to give you the exact number of Coast Guard women and men that have graduated from Training Center Cape May since 1948. But, I what, but what I can tell you, every one of us has graduated with this regiment, carries a special place in our hearts for what we have learned. Many have gone on to expand their Coast Guard families with wives, husbands, sons, daughters, and pets. This is what makes the Coast Guard our Coast Guard. The advances we make today with our diversity, equity, and inclusion to display a military service where everyone's treated equal will have, it, will have a lasting impact on the next 75 years. Number two, the second impact is our facility. If you look around, you will see Few buildings on base that have been around for the 
past 75 years. Heck, the duration of the land's existence. Today, we are building a better infrastructure for tomorrow. The third impact is in the community. With the jobs for some of our permanent party loved ones, significant others, being a part of a welcoming community through volunteerism, economically by shopping local. I would like to end here like I do with all my all hands. When I say one mission, the response is one Coast Guard. All right, audience, we ready? One mission. One Coast Guard. One mission. One Coast Guard. One mission. One Coast Guard. Thank you. Simple Paradis. It is now my distinct pleasure to introduce our 14th Master Chief Pet Officer of the Coast Guard, Master Chief Heath Jones. How y'all doing this afternoon? Everybody good? So the last time I was on stage with Captain Judge, he made me and the Commandant do push-ups, but that was before lunch, so I'm trusting, you know, everybody's safe in the front row for my buttons right now, so don't worry about that. No, it is great to be here in Cape May. As Captain Judge and his team here have, uh, have harnessed, it's great to be home in Cape May. Every enlisted member of our organization starts their career right here in Cape May, New Jersey. You know, I gotta tell you, it's a, uh, as myself and the Deputy Mick Pob and the Master Chief of the Reserve, uh, you know, talk, it's a selfish thing sometimes for us to come to Cape May because it recharges me. It, it, it keeps us fired up and I'm gonna buy, every time I come here, and I see these sentinels march in front of us through the pass and review. I think of, and I, I've turned him as the Coast Guard's uh, greatest poet in history, Admiral Charlie Ray. And when you watch these folks go by, and, and his word is, if that don't make you want to run through hell with gasoline drawers on, nothing will. <laughs> you know, uh, so, so, sorry, Vice, I told you I was going to say that, sir. Uh, but that's, that's what these young women and men do. They charge us up. They are the future of our organization, and we are committed to ensuring that they have everything they need in their professional lives and their personal lives to succeed as they go out and do the amazing missions of the Coast Guard. Uh, Mr. Deputy Secretary, I know we were talking about the weather. We call, you, you mentioned in the Army, it's if it ain't raining, it ain't training. We just call this beautiful Coast Guard weather. Uh, so thank you, Kate May, for, for giving us this great day. And uh, you know, what, what our goal is, what I'm committed to, what the Vice Commandant's committed to and the Commandant's committed to is we have beyond the shadow of a doubt, the most world-class staff and team here at Training Center Cape May. They are the greatest in the world at what they do. We also, as you can see over to your left and behind you, we are bringing the greatest women and men in our nation in to, uh, to be part of our world-class Coast Guard. As uh, Captain Judge mentioned the infrastructure, we are committed to ensuring that we have the world-class facilities that we need here to continue to train our Sentinels of tomorrow. So that, that's, that's what we're rolling up our sleeves and, uh, and getting after there. And I will tell you, a couple folks that aren't here that I, that I promised I would pass on their, their uh, condolences. Right before we came out, I got a text from Admiral Fagan, and she goes, I'm not happy. And I text her back, why, ma'am? She goes, I want to be where y'all are. And I, sorry, ma'am, uh, not sorry, but she does really, really want to be here. Uh, I promise you that. She's uh, doing other important business. And the other is our ombudsman at large, who I'm a little partial to. My wife, Carol's been uh, traveling for her work, so just couldn't make this out. But she wanted to pass along and say thank you very much for everything you do. Uh, I, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention this front row right here. This is like the New York Yankees murderer's row as I'm looking around here. <laughs> and I'm looking at all these great uh, master chiefs uh, of, of the present. Uh, one of the past, a dear friend of ours, Bill Hollingsworth, always great to see you here, my friend. Uh, thank you for being so much uh, a part of Cape May. And with that, I have the honor of bringing on the stage our 33rd Vice Commandant and someone that we go back a long time in our career together back to uh, Captain Poolin and Senior Chief Jones days back on the Gulf Coast. But it's my privilege to introduce our 33rd Vice Commandant, Admiral Steve Poolin. Well, thanks, Master Chief and Captain Judge. Thanks for letting me come down here and spend some time with you. It's great to be here. What a great afternoon and uh, good afternoon to everybody. Chaplain, thanks for setting a great tone bringing us this great nautical weather. Wouldn't be a 75th anniversary celebration, as McPog said, without some great nautical weather. And it's great to see, 
Uh, so many distinguished guests here, uh, our elected officials, our flag officers, our senior enlisted leaders, uh, those that have walked through the gates of Cape May and those that have supported uh, others who have walked through the gates of Cape May. So I'm just absolutely thrilled to be here to celebrate the 75th anniversary at the home of the Coast Guard's enlisted workforce. And I tell you what, you know, I get to do a lot of cool things. This is one of the coolest things I get to do is spend time with young Coast Guard men and women and see the excellence uh, each and every day uh, that represents our service. And I'll tell you what, to all the recruits that are out there in formation, to the company commanders, to the staff, you guys look sharp. I'm proud of you, Commandant's proud of you, and we're proud to serve with you. And you guys have an exciting future ahead. And this is one of the most meaningful and special places for our service. And what we do here in Cape May will always be critical to our success. Demand for Coast Guard missions at home and abroad are expanding. The world is complex, and we provide a unique contribution to the rules-based order. It continues to grow, and I've seen that throughout the course of my career. And after these recruits complete their training, they're going to report to operational units. And at units that have been in no greater demand, never busier, and never more critical than they are today. Our cutters and our training teams are deployed throughout the Indo-Pacific. They're supporting partner nations and allies to uphold that rule, rules-based order that I mentioned, to protect natural resources, to ensure the oceans remain free and open for all. They're in the Caribbean, in the Straits of Florida. Our cutter and our air and our boat crews protect the safety of life at sea in response to the ongoing surge in irregular maritime migration. In the Eastern Pacific, our sentinels keep America safe by interdicting illegal narcotics before they can reach our shores and infect our communities. In our ports and our inland rivers, our aids navigation teams and our buoy tenders maintain the marine transportation system to keep our nation's economic engine running at full speed. And I will tell you, the marine transportation system contributes $5.4 trillion annually to America's prosperity. Along every U.S. coast, from the Arctic to the tropics, our crews are always ready to save lives when disaster strikes. These missions are challenging, but for 75 years, our enlisted workforce has prepared to accomplish all of them through their training here at Cape May. Our Sentinels have learned the basics of their profession here. They've endured the heat of summer, the cold of winter, and the high energy attention of their company commanders. And I will tell you what, I'm going to pick up on something Mass Chief Jones said. He, he quoted Charlie Ray. I'm going to quote another person from Arkansas. If you're not inspired by today, and it doesn't burn a fire in your belly, your wood's wet. <laughs> to the recruits here today, each of you, you can be proud to be on this parade field, marching in the footsteps of the thousands who came before you. And thanks to the diligence and the professionalism of the training staff here, and with the support of the local Cape May community, you're going to complete your training, and you're going to go on to conduct Coast Guard missions around the world. And as I said, the Commandant and I are so grateful for you, and we're so proud to serve with you. And there is no limit to what you can achieve in our service. Some of you could even return here one day as company commanders to carry on the tradition of excellence that you see. But whatever your Coast Guard journey is, there's never been a better and more exciting time to serve in our Coast Guard. Look, at some point, you may even find yourself as a senior leader in the Department of Homeland Security, just like our Deputy Secretary, John Tien. He, like you, started his, his federal service in the Armed Forces, and he served a career as an Army officer. He started out much like you are today, being challenged to perform by his command cadre at West Point during that six-week six basic training program when you first a report, it's called Beast Barracks. It's a summer training program. Now, Mr. Deputy Secretary, that's only six weeks. This is eight weeks, so I'm not sure who had it worse. <laughs> Here's my point. The leadership lessons and the 
sense of service instilled in these first weeks of military training are common to any branch and lay a foundation for a lifetime of service to our nation. So I am so proud and honored to introduce Deputy Secretary Chen. He's a true advocate for the Coast Guard who ensures that as the only military service in the Department of Homeland Security, we will continue to make our greatest contributions to the nation's security and economic prosperity and be a vital part of the Joint Force. We are indeed blessed to have him as our Deputy Service Secretary. So ladies and gentlemen, it is an immense honor for me to welcome to this podium Deputy Secretary John Tian. Thank you. Admiral Pullen, thanks very much uh, for that introduction. You're right, uh, West Point Beast Barracks is only six weeks. And so that tells me, and I, my chief of staff is out here, and so she's my uh, administrative person who authorizes my travel. It looks like I need to come back uh, to Camp May Training Center and do an additional two weeks. Uniform, 203, you only have eight more days. I ate lunch with you, I know that, so it won't be with you. So I think I need to come back with uh, probably Victor or X-Ray Company and come back with you. So. Uh, Captain uh, Warren Judge uh, and uh, Master Chief Petty Officer Rad Hoffpar, uh, look for me in about uh, one week's time. I'll come back here and I'll complete my full eight weeks of training. Yeah, roger that. Uh, he says he's sizing me out, although I think I'm going to have to have a slightly bigger uh, blouse size than you. You look pretty lean there, uh, Captain Judge. <laughs> you know, it is good to travel with uh, Admiral Pullen. Number one, he always brings uh, some kind of aircraft that I can tag along on. Uh, number two, he brings uh, great travel mates like uh, the McPog, uh, Heath Jones. Uh, but also it means that I don't have to stand up here and be the oldest guy on stage uh, because <laughs> he graduated from the Air Force, or, I'm sorry, from the Coast Guard Academy in 1984. I graduated from West Point in 1987. But if you do that math, if you do that math, uh, Admiral Pullen, uh, and for myself, that's still 36, 39 years. We're only literally 50% of the age of the Cape May Training Center. That is remarkable. It's remarkable uh, because it is said that the Coast Guard and, if, and eventually the Department of Homeland Security have remained committed not only to the Coast Guard mission, but committed to this mission that is so incredibly important to the United States Coast Guard, to the Department of Homeland Security, and to the United States of America. And the only way we could do that is A, with the Coast Guard support, DHS support, federal government support, the nation's support, but also the community support of Cape May. Now I've uh, been told there's a couple folks here who I'd like to acknowledge. I haven't met you yet, but I look forward to meeting you at the reception. Uh, I, I've heard that Deputy Mayor Lorraine Brown is here, so thank you. Uh, Cape May uh, County Commissioners, Brigadier General Retired Jeffrey Pearson, is here, Mr. Will Morey, another commissioner is here, and as well as somebody who's very special uh, to the Coast Guard, in particular to Cape May, Ms. Marla Brown, who's a Cape May County uh, Community Foundation leader, and it was really her and her leadership, my understanding, is that helped Cape May become a true Coast Guard town. And I love on the Forcecom, on the uscoastguard.mil website, when you open it up and it says, Cape May, the hometown of the Coast Guard the hometown of the Coast Guard. And I was reminded of that when I got off the uh, airplane, uh, Captain Judge, he, for a second he paused, he wanted to say uh, hello to all those folks in the blue suits, and I could tell in the tip of his tongue, he wanted to say, welcome home to me. But I'd never been here, I'm not a Coastie, I, have, I haven't yet, not yet, finished my training here at Cape May. <laughs> so the next time I get off the plane, then you can say to me, Warren, welcome home. But the only way we can say that is because of the community support from all of you in this audience who are in this city, who are in this county, or who are in this town, and folks to include, and not just the, count, not just the city, not just the county, uh, but from the federal government. I know we also have a representative here today, a former Marine or a Marine uh, who comes from Congressman Van Drew's office. Thank you to all of you who support the Coast Guard and in particular Cape May Training Center here. You have made Cape May the hometown of the Coast Guard. And as Mick Pog said, as we rolled on the post, and I could tell, I mean, he was getting goose, goosebumps as we rolled on the post. He said, sir, this is the birthplace of the Coast Guard Enlisted Corps. And he said it was such pride. 
And the fact that he could say it with pride, but he could say it with pride over a long period of time. Now, McPog, you're a little bit younger than us, than me and Admiral Poland, uh, but you, you've been saying it since, uh, since the mid-1990s. And so we really do appreciate your leadership. Now, over the last, I know Captain uh, Judge is a 1986 graduate of Cape May. Uh, and when I took over as the Deputy Secretary, one of the great honors you have to be the Deputy Service Secretary of the U.S. Coast Guard is you get a chance to have two military aides, two military assistants uh, come and, and basically support you across a whole breadth of responsibilities. And I thought about it. And, you know, I went through a bunch of interview processes. I said, sir, you can pick across, you know, the wide breadth of the thousands of Coast Guard officers, uh, O4s, lieutenant commanders, you know, what's the profile you're looking for? And I said, I think what I, I'm going to meet a lot of Coast Guard officers. I'm going to have, uh, you know, at that point in time, it was uh, Admiral uh, Carl Schultz, obviously, and then eventually uh, now very proud of her, uh, Admiral Linda Fagan as the commandant. She was then the vice commandant and the commandant, Admiral Pullen, uh, and I went on some uh, travel very early. And I said, but still, the admirals are super important, the officers are super important, but for goodness sake, the Coast Guard is represented by 80% of the Coast Guard is represented by the enlisted. I know I can't have uh, as my military aides because it's the rank and billet and needs to be lieutenant commander. But I said, is there a way for me to understand the Coast Guard through the enlisted eyes, perhaps through somebody who's gone through OCS? So my profile, my threshold was, to select two officers who had gone through Cape May. One is here in the audience today, uh, the other one they're on rotation. The first one is uh, Lieutenant Commander Bobby Lapolt. He's a graduate, and this is gonna make him old, so thank goodness he's not here. He doesn't look this old, but uh, graduated in 1997, and then went on to be a Coast Guard rescue swimmer. The second one who is here today is Lieutenant Commander Brandon Earhart, uh, who went through here after having served in Iraq, the same time I was in Iraq in the 2005, as a Marine and then came here as prior service uh, and then went on uh, to eventually become, uh, go through OCS and become a commission officer and is part of the boat forces now. I asked them as we are planning to come up here, it's actually been a couple months in the making. I said, tell me what's special about Cape May. And, and they went through and they said, look, sir, it's the birthplace of the uh, enlisted corps of the United States Coast Guard. But for us, what it taught us was that the team comes first that you must have a mentality that the reason you're on the boat, that the reason you are standing watch, the reason that you are on Inland River is that you are there to serve and support the American people and that somewhere, at some time, no matter what the weather is, we need to be there. And I thought, wow, Kate May taught you that. We are so fortunate that those two decided to join the Coast Guard, that those two came through Kate May and that those two are gonna be joined soon by all of these different companies who are standing before us today within this battalion. We we're fortunate that they came through the birthplace of the US Coast Guard Enlisted Corps. Now, Admiral Poland was talking about all of the different missions of the Coast Guard. He is absolutely right. He certainly knows it as the Vice Commandant, as someone who's been uh, you know, in service a little bit longer than me, uh, in service for quite a few, few years. And when he was touching on those different missions, they really are the missions, very representative of, and certainly inclusive of, the missions of the Department of Homeland Security. The overall mission of the Department of Homeland Security is that with honor and integrity, we will safeguard the American people, our homeland, and our values. With honor and integrity, we will safeguard the American people, our homeland, and our values. And when I came in here two years ago, after being confirmed by the U.S. Senate, I said, I need to walk in the steps of all of those who serve in the Department of Homeland Security. Coast Guard's a super important uh, part. It's one of eight big components. And I thought, I'm gonna start with the Coast Guard. I am their service secretary. I need to see and understand all of the different things that they do. I've not been in the Coast Guard. Uh, I've never been in the Coast Guard, but I've uh, only been with the Coast Guard for two years. I thought, I better get on the accelerated track. And so I did. In Seattle, I went and stood on the deck and understood the mission of the icebreaker Healy super important to our uh, overall Department of Homeland Security mission up in the Arctic to keep it the kind of area of operations, part of the world where we'll have freedom of navigation and making sure that the economic viability of that very important part of the world remains so. 
Then I went down to Port of LA Long Beach, where I met with the marine inspectors to make sure that the free flow of trade continued, especially from the important uh, eastern part of the world. And I went to San Diego, where I got on a UH-60 Jayhawk and flew the trace of the southwest border, where the cartels, especially the Sinaloa cartel, means to do harm to us, who have nefarious intent to bring uh, to traffic human beings, in particular synthetic opo opioids like fentanyl, across the border. Then I came across the, the nation. I'm not hitting you all the stops, but these big ones, and went to the Ohio uh, Valley sector and stood on the Louisville, uh, in Louisville on the Ohio River and spoke to those who manned the buoy tenders to make sure that that commercial progress and process remained part of the $5.3 trillion that the vice just spoke about. I went down to Miami more than a few times, but definitely went afloat with the U.S. Coast Guard Bernard C. Weber, who will have an incredibly difficult mission, both in terms of counter-human smuggling and, again, in terms of counter-narcotics. I had the great privilege of going to Fort Meade, Maryland, which is the home of U.S. Cyber Command and the National Security Agency, where I met with Coasties, who are standing the watch as cybersecurity officials to make sure that the maritime transportation system is secure against the cyber attacks from the likes of Iran, Russia, North Korea, China, both state and non-state actors. In every one of these places, they told me about all of the different stories about how they are serving, how they are serving the Coast Guard mission and how they are serving the Department of Homeland Security mission and how they are serving the United States of America. When I came here today, I had never met a, a recruit who somebody was in holding, you know, wearing the hat that says recruit on it as I look to the left and to the right and as you did the pass and review. But I've had a chance over the last six hours to spend the day with some of you, to see the training, to see the seamanship uh, training uh, facility over there uh, at the Bernard C. Weber building to see you in formation, to eat lunch with some of you, especially in Uniform uh, 203 Recruit Company. My question to all of you who are standing in formation, there at ease and over here to the right to the senior company, Uniform 203, what will your stories be? What will your stories be for wherever you're going? And again, at lunch, some of you told me you're going to South Carolina. Some of you are going to St. Louis. Some of you are going to Key West and into Alaska. What will your stories be? Now, the other question I have for you is the question that I continue to see in every single hall that I've been walking across with Captain Judge and Master Chief Petty Officer Hofpar, which is, are you ready? I know you are ready based on what the Master Chief has uh, been telling us, what the Admiral has uh, been telling us, and what I've seen with my own eyes, both here today and out in the Coast Guard fleet. You are absolutely ready to stand the watch. You are absolutely ready to be helping safeguarding the American people, our homeland, and our values. And for that, for you to become sentinels in the United States Coast Guard, the Secretary of the Homeland Security and myself, we appreciate you and we thank you. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Secretary. Ladies and gentlemen, it is now my pleasure to introduce Deputy Mayor Lorraine Baldwin, who will offer a few words. Good afternoon, everyone. Both myself, Lorraine Baldwin, uh, the Deputy Mayor of Cape May, and Zachary Mollock, the Mayor of Cape May, welcome you to Cape May. <laughs> I'm honored to be present with you today to celebrate the 75th anniversary of recruit training here at the Training Center of Cape May. The Coast Guard service members and their families are invaluable to the city of Cape May, and I am proud that Cape May is known to be the Coast Guard's hometown. 
It is my privilege to present this proclamation on behalf of Mayor Mullock and the City of Cape May. And if Captain Judge would come up and you'll read the proclamation. Yes, I'll re I'll read. And also we're asking Seaman Newman please report to the stage. He was not ready for that, just so y'all know. <laughs> Proclamation. Recognizing the 75th anniversary of recruit training at United States Coast Guard Training Center, Cape May. Whereas United States Coast Guard Training Center, Cape May, formerly known as Recruit Receiving Center, Cape May, officially opened in 1948. And whereas in 1982, Training Center, Cape May became the sole accession point for the entire enlisted workforce, and whereas the city of Cape May acknowledges the caliber of the service members that Training Center Cape May graduates annually from the Recruit Training Center program, and whereas the city of Cape May is proud to be the birthplace of the Coast Guard's enlisted corps and the Coast Guard's unofficial hometown, and whereas the city of Cape May values its relationship with the Training Center Cape May leadership and the Coast Guard service members that take pride in Cape May County's designation as a Coast Guard community. Now, therefore, I, Zachary M. Mullock, Mayor of the City of Cape May, New Jersey, call on all residents and visitors of Cape May to celebrate the 75th anniversary of recruit training at Training Center Cape May and thank all active duty, veteran, and fallen members of the United States Coast Guard for their service. In witness thereof, I have hereunto set my hand and caused the seal of the City of Cape May to be affixed this 8th day of June, 2023. Thank you, Deputy Mayor Baldwin. Ladies and gentlemen, Deputy Secretary Tian, Admiral Poulin, Master Chief Jones, and Captain Judge will now unveil Training Center Cape May's 75th logo and pose for an official picture. The diamond on the logo is recognition of the 75th anniversary as the traditional gift for a 75th anniversary. On both sides of the logo are the years Training Center Cape May has been training recruits, 1948 to 2023. The slogan, Brilliant at the Basics since 1948, is a nod to the diamond anniversary while acknowledging the years of basic training that has been conducted at Training Center Cape May. Ladies and gentlemen, Captain Judge would now like to show his appreciation to the official party. We'll start with Mr. Deputy Secretary. The recognition states, thank you, DHS Deputy Secretary John Tien, Admiral Steve Pullen, and Master Chief Heath Jones, respectively, in joining Training Center Cape May in honoring our 75 years of distinguished recruit training, dated June 8, 2023. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the playing of Semper Paratus.
Ladies and gentlemen, please remain standing for the departure of the official party. Now, Deputy Secretary Homeland Security departing. And salute. Ready, two. Now, Vice Commandant, U.S. Coast Guard, departing. Now, Master Chief Petty Officer, Coast Guard, departing. Now, Training Center Cape May, departing. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes today's ceremony.